Aluminium is a reactive metal, so it's never going to be found just lying around like gold, for example. The extraction from its ore was very expensive, and a block of it was even put on display with the French crown jewels. It was such an expensive metal. Now, it makes up 8% of the Earth's crust. So what's changed that now it's disposable? So this, uh, this is aluminium oxide, Al2O3. It's a white powder. It has a really high melting point because the aluminium iron is 3 plus and very tiny and the oxide iron is 2 minus and very tiny. They have a high charge density. And so they have a very large electrostatic attraction. They really stick together very well. Need lots of temperature, need very high energy to melt it. Now, there's no way that you could easily melt this to do electrolysis to get the aluminium metal out of it. But uh, in order to bring the cost down and make it more viable, you can dissolve this aluminium oxide in cryolite. And that takes the melting point of that solution down to 950 degrees, uh, which is much more economically viable. So that's what they do. But even though my chemistry tells me that this is in there, I still find that, I still find that hard to believe. It's incredible, right? So this is an animation of the electrolysis. The little green lights are electrons. Now the Al203, well that's made of aluminium 3 plus ions. Now they're positive and they're going to be attracted to the negative electrode, the cathode. And when they get there, they're going to pick up three electrons and turn into the liquid aluminium, which is then pumped out. The oxide iron that was in the alumina is negative and it's going to be attracted towards the positive carbon anodes where electrons are pulled off of those oxide ions and oxygen gas is formed. Now that oxygen gas was so hot it will react with the carbon anodes to form carbon dioxide which bubbles off. So you are going to need to replace those anodes regularly as they react and disappear into the breeze. So zooming in, you can see those aluminium 3 plus ions being reduced. Reduction is gain of electrons. And those oxide ions, well, they're oxidized. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So there are three steps in the production of aluminium. The first step is turning the aluminium ore, and ore is a rock containing high amounts of aluminium in this case into pure alumina, aluminium oxide. Step two is producing this cryolite, uh, which will dissolve the alumina, reducing its melting point. And step three is you're gonna electrolyze that mixture, producing liquid aluminium and oxygen. So let's take these one by one. Uh, I'm pretty sure that these are the only equations that they're gonna ask you. So you've got your aluminium ore, which is composed of aluminium hydroxide. Ah, we want that. Metal hydroxides, we don't want that. And other metal oxides, we don't want that. Now these metal hydroxides and oxides are going to be basic, which means they'll react with acids. But aluminium hydroxide, well that is amphoteric, which means it will react with acids or bases. So if you add a base to this aluminium ore, then only this will react and this won't. And when this reacts with a base, in this case sodium hydroxide, it will dissolve uh, in the water present and you can remove it, leaving behind these insoluble hydroxides and oxides. So the aluminium ore reacts with sodium hydroxide, turns into a solution and comes down here. Uh, now, of course, you don't have aluminium hydroxide anymore. You've got whatever aluminium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide react with. That's what's present here. Hmm. This is AQ. It's gone through the filtration system, leaving behind those two solids. Uh, I want my aluminium hydroxide back. So in order to turn the sodium aluminium oxide back into sodium hydroxide, well, they do what's called seeding. 
Seeding is where you drop a few crystals of, in this case, aluminium hydroxide into this solution and aluminium hydroxide crystals will appear. So you can recover the aluminium hydroxide via seeding, adding tiny crystals which will cause this to turn into aluminium hydroxide again. Step one continues because we don't really want aluminium hydroxide, we actually want aluminium oxide or alumina and all you have to do is heat that up. If you heat it you'll drive off water. Again, I'm pretty sure you won't have to remember this, but they might give you the equation for you to balance. All right, that's step one finished. We've now made pure alumina. So step two is we're going to be making the cryolite. Well, remember that I called it sodium aluminium oxide. You can also call it sodium aluminate. Grab some of that and some hydrofluoric acid. This is AQ, this is AQ. And some sodium carbonate, which is also AQ. Put all that together and you will make cryolite. Na3AlF6. Now that's a solid, but that, when heated, will dissolve the alumina at a much lower temperature. Alumina, 2000 degrees centigrade is a melting point. With this, it's closer to 900. There's some water and some carbon dioxide also produced. Now, I'd imagine this would be quite exothermic and that would be a gas, but the book says it's a liquid. Let's balance this up. So that's step two, making cryolite. And step three is the electrolysis. Now, if I've got aluminium oxide, essentially, that means I've got aluminium three plus ions, it's in group 13, and I've got oxide ions, O2 minus. These things are gonna be liquid, now electrolysis uh, tends to make the elements from whatever you started with. So it's gonna make aluminium and that's gonna make oxygen. Now this is gonna be a liquid because it's still really hot and that's gonna be a gas. So how do we get from here to there? Well, if I add three electrons, that is now a balanced equation. And to go from an oxide ion to the oxygen molecule, well, I'm gonna need two of those and four electrons on this side. So those are now two balanced half equations. If the aluminium is gaining electrons, think of redox. Reduction is gain, oxidation is loss. So this is reduction. Reduction is gain of electrons. So this must mean oxidation. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Yep, this lost four electrons. So this is oxidation. Now this must be the negative electrode, it's full of electrons. In fact, it's so full of electrons, it's giving them away. So the negative electrode in electrolysis is called the cathode. And the positive electrode in electrolysis is called the anode. And as a final note, this oxygen when it's produced is really hot. And since the anodes are made of carbon, the carbon anode plus the oxygen produced makes carbon dioxide. So that's why the carbon anodes, the graphite anodes need to be replaced. So finally, the carbon and the oxygen makes carbon dioxide. So you need to replace those.
the end on a personal note, why is it that the British say aluminium and the Americans say aluminium? Well, my chemistry teacher as a kid told me that at the aluminium factory, the eye fell off, and that's why the Americans call it aluminium. I then went on to teach that as gospel for the next 15 years, until one day I looked it up on the internet and found it to be a total fabrication. What an idiot.